G'day all, welcome back to Built by Chris. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how I made this. This is a, um, a pen blank cutting jig. Um, I've recently gotten into uh, making pens and um, it's taken up a fair bit of my time. So number one, I'd like to apologize to all my subscribers for, uh, for not putting out a video sooner, but I've been absolutely flat out with these pens. If I'd have known 10 years ago that these pens were gonna be this popular, I would've done then. But anyway, um, while I'm cutting the blanks, I'm thinking to myself, I've got all these pens that I've got to make. There's got to be an easier way to cut these blanks. Quicker and easier. Um, so me being me, I jumped onto, um, onto YouTube, typed in pen blank cutting jig. And again, there was probably about 600 trillion uh, different videos on the subject. But one jumped out at me. It was from uh, Keith Veronesi. Um, I hope I pronounced his name right. Uh, he's looked uh, like the easiest to make and uh, the most simple to use. So I based mine on his design. Uh, I made a few small changes, basically put my own little twist on it. Um, and I've tried it out and I've got to tell you, it works an absolute treat. So if you want to see how I made this jig, this uh, pen blank cutting jig, follow me and I'll show you how easy it is. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to cut the uh, the base. I'm using some form ply um, because it's nice and smooth and it's nice and slippery and it'll be good for this application. The size I'm going to cut it to is um, about 120 millimeters wide by about 240 millimeters long and that'll be the size of my jig. So I've already got the table saw set up to uh, the wrong size. So let's set it up to 120. Lock it off and make the first cut. Okay, now all I've got to do is cut it to, and it's going to be a specific size because I've already got a piece of T-Track cut to a specific size. So I'm just going to measure that and then I'll make this the same. And it's 245 millimeters. So let's set that to 245. Now let's cut this one. There's my base. Everything's going to be built off that. So I've got my T-Track that's ready to go in. So now I need to uh, set up my dado stack in the table saw. And I'm going to route out a groove or a dado to fit my T-Track. And I'm also going to route out a, a groove to fit a 12 mil piece of MDF. That's going to be here. That's going to be one of the fences. So let's go set up for that. Just before I swap out the uh, blade for the dado stack, I'm just going to cut a, um, a strip of 70 mil. Uh, that's going to be the back fence. So I'm going to drop it into the base by 10 millimeters, which means it's going to stick up about 60, which will be high enough for, for my purpose. So I'm just going to rip this down to 70 mil and uh, then we'll swap out for the dado stack. Okay, there's that piece ripped down. Now I'll um, I'll shut off the camera and I'll uh, put in the, the dado stack and we'll do the next cut. Okay, I've got the dado stack in. Uh, I've got it set to close enough to the width of, of my T-Track. Um, if I need to, I'll put a, uh, put a couple of shims in there if I need to shim it out. Um, but I'm gonna run a test piece through first just to see if I, uh, if I nailed it in one. And also I've set the height to the well, that might be just a tad high, so I'll just drop this down a bit. Right about there, I think. Right about there. Okay, so hopefully I've got the depth, depth dialed in as well. So let's make a quick cut and see how I fared. Oh, there's my cut. 
Now it fits in there nice and tight, and you know what? I think I've nailed it in one. How about that? If there was ever any doubt to me being the best in the business, this dispels it. So let me get the uh, the actual piece now, and I'll run that through. Now I want to. I suppose I want to put the uh, the T-Track round about here. These are all arbitrary measurements. There's there's no science to this. Um, I'm going to pop it in about here. Oh well, no, let's let's measure it out. Let's measure it out. Give me a minute. I'll go get a, uh, a ruler. Okay. So what I've done is I made a few marks here. Let me explain to you what they are. This mark here is at the 80 mil from this side. 80 millimeters from here to here is, is where the fence that I've cut is gonna go in. And I'm gonna cut another 12 mil dado in here once I finish this one. Here is my 19 mil uh, dado, which is gonna accommodate the T-track. So I've set up my blade in here. I've set the fence up so that it cuts inside here. And let's do that cut now. All right, there's my cut. Nice and clean and straight. And there's my dado, uh, my T-tracks, it's right in there. I've got a couple of screw holes already drilled out. So we'll, uh, we'll get that uh, glued in and screwed down in very short order. Next thing I'm gonna do is change the, um, change the dado stack out for a 12 mil so I can run my next dado for my fence so let me do that and i'll get back to you i wanted to just quickly show you how i work out um how to how to make the thickness of my dado stack here i've got my 12 mil run of the mill mdf just 12 mil mdf i've got that laid down on uh, something a very flat surface now i know my table saw top is very flat so i've got that laid there and i've got the dado stack laid next to it and all i do is i lay the the blades on top of one another as i would in the table saw and I run up the blades up to the piece that I'll be uh, cutting. Now I know this is too low. I can feel that it's too low, so I'll take this one off. That's the outside blade, so it's got to stay. And I'll just replace these as I see fit. So I'll take out, now these are Imperial. I've got to give myself a metric set, but these are Imperial. Now this is an eighth. I'll pop that on there and see how I'll go with this one. Press down on it now. I can feel that is absolutely flush as flush flush. Maybe a bit high, maybe just a tad high. But you know what? For the purpose of the exercise, I'm not going to worry about it too much because I'm going to be gluing and screwing this in anyway. It's just a literally a tenth of a mil, I reckon. I can just feel the ridge. So I'll pop that into the table saw. I'm gonna do a, um, a test cut anyway, just to see how bad it is. If it's really, really sloppy, then I'll, I'll swap it out and, um, and either shim out what I've got or um, work on a different combination of chipper blades. So just bear with me while I put this back into the table saw and uh, we'll make a cut. Okay, well, it took me a couple of goes, but I finally got the, uh, the width of the, uh, the dado stack in. I set the fence, I'm gonna make the cut now. As my dear old granddad used to say, measure twice, cut once. Just wanna make sure I've got the height of this dialed in. It's only gonna be about 10 mil. I just wanna set a 10 mil above the table. She blows right there, 10 mil. Ten mil, perfect. All right, good old granddad. Okay, let's lock that down so it doesn't move. And away we go. Alright, 
So I've got my uh, dado from my T-Track. There it is there. I've got my dado from my fence. There's my there. All right, so now all I've got to do is cut this to length. Uh, let's go to the, um, the miter saw and cut this down to size. Now, what I've done here is I've set a stop block and I've popped every, all the pieces that are going to go together into the uh, miter saw and I'm going to cut them all at once. That way, I know everything's going to be 100% the same size. So let me turn on the vacuum cleaner and I'll make that cut. Move the off cut away. And there we have three pieces. They're all exactly the same length. You know, sometimes I uh, frighten myself with how good I actually am. Take note, people. Take note. There it is. Now I'm going to build the next part to this. Okay, next thing I have to make is the bed for this and another fence. So I'm just going to measure up quickly. This needs to be 80 mil, which it is. So I'll just cut a short piece to 80 mil wide. And well, it doesn't really matter because it's got to be trimmed down anyway. So 80 mil wide for now, and then I'll uh, measure up how how uh, tall this side fence got to be. So bear with me while I set up the table saw, and I'll be right back. Now again, I can't speak highly enough of this Alice positioner from Incra. If I set it to 80 mil, it's going to be spot on 80 mil. Um, it just makes life so much easier. It takes the guesswork out of everything. There's 80 mil set. I'll lock it down in front. Now all I've got to do is get my piece and run it through. my tape measure uh, you know what's not even coming up to you it's, it's 80 mil take my word for it it's dead on 80 mil so so there we have it now that's nice and flush there which is perfect now I've got to set up the fence for this cut here where's my ruler And this one is going to be 47 mil. 47 mil. So I'll get rid of this piece because I don't need it anymore. I'll get my little off cut. I will set my fence to, you guessed it, 47 mil. Lock it down. Now let's make that cut. And there it is. There's the other part of the fence. So now, the next part of this little jig is I have to cut a stop block off of this so that it sits on here. Now again, the measurement can be whatever you like it to be. I'm going to make mine 25 mil. So let's mark that off. Twenty-five mil. I'll go over to the miter saw and I'll dock it off and then I'll be right with you. Okay, so there's my little piece. There's my bed that fly that uh, that'll slide along here. And this is going to sit here like a, a stop block. Can you see all that? That's going to sit here like a stop block. So all I've got to do now is I've got to raise this by a card. 
If I had a business card, I'll raise that up by a business card so it allows a little bit of clearance and I'll glue that on. So let me find a card. All right, so I found a card. It was actually a card from my uh, local member of parliament sending me uh, some sort of a thing to fill out. So they're being useful at last. So I'll put that in there just to raise it off the bed of the, um, the slide and I'll glue that down. Yeah, bit of glue. Stick it on there. Put a clamp on it. Get rid of all the squeeze out. Now I'll leave that card in there so that if there's any squeeze out at the bottom going to go on the card and not on my uh, sliding mechanism here. So I've got that as flush as I can get it. There we go. Alright, now I'm going to give that about 15-20 minutes to dry, then I'll come back to it. Okay, the next part of the construction is I'm going to glue and nail this into here. So I'll just get some glue. Run a nice bead in here. Into the corners. Pop that in there, squash it around so I get the glue dispersed nicely. And I'm going to pop a couple of bread nails in this one as well, just to hold it while it's uh, while the glue's going off. So that's done. Okay, now this bottom piece that slides in here, as you can see, it slides. It doesn't get caught under there because I, I put the card on there, so I lifted it just up enough so now I've got to glue this to this glue these two bits together okay next thing I've got to do as you can see that's glued in that's not going anywhere it's been nailed down it's nice and solid next thing I've got to do is the sliding bed and the the, uh, the back fence of this so what I'm going to do, basically, is just pop a little mark where this fence ends, like that. I really should organise myself and get my tools all together while I'm doing this. Okay. I'm just going to uh, strike a line here. Okay, now this, again, is not critical it doesn't need to be dead accurate because we're going to be making a fine adjustment on this okay so in she goes and all I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue this to this but I'm going to bring it up to this line and then I'm going to pop a couple of brads in just to hold it while it's going off so let me just mark how long this is so I don't put too much glue on there Okay. So I'm going to lay this flat on the bench so I know it's going to be square at the back. And I'm just going to push it together. Make sure it's moved up to that line. Let's pop a couple of nails in it to hold it together. Pretty simple construction. There's really there's really nothing to it. Let me just scrape some of this glue out of here. 
okay so there's that so now that butts up to here now you can see I've got a little bit of overhang here got a little bit of an overhang here it doesn't matter because I'll be trimming that off and I'll be trimming it off uh, an extra three mil from the end of the stop lock and I'll explain all that later first things first I'm going to cut it all so it's all nice and level okay next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this two track into it it's nice and flush so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a lot of super glue on it And this is uh, thick super glue, not the runny stuff. I'm going to be quite generous with it. There we go. And I'm going to shoot some activator into that so that it goes off nice and quick. And then it goes. There we go. In. Beautiful. Now what I'm going to do also is I'm going to um, put a couple of screws in there just to make sure that it's um, not going to move at all. So let me set up for that. Okay. I popped a couple of screws in there so that's not going anywhere. So basically we're nearly there nearly there next thing I have to do is I've got to drill a hole through this bed to accept this that way that's going to go into the t-track below it and I can then lock it down into any position so when I put my tube in here it's not going to move okay so first things first I've got to mark the uh, the center point and these t-tracks uh, very handily come with a center line so let me just uh, orientate myself here, right about there. Okay. Gonna carry that mark along. And I'll go over to the drill press and I'll drill a hole. Wanna come? Alright, I've marked out a spot where I want to drill. I've got an 8mm drill bit in the uh, drill press. Let's drill a hole. hard anyway see if I got the right size beautiful no playing it beautiful let's go back over to the jig okay so here's my jig here's my fence with my uh, t-nut or t-bolt in there just gonna slot it in slot it right up to the end And tighten down the nut. Okay. Now I've just got to uh, cut this bed down. Now it's going to be where it is flush. I'm going to trim it off another three mil from that, which then will give me a millimeter and a half on either side of the blank. And I'll show you how that works. Okay, now I've got a marking knife somewhere, but I can't for the life of me find it. So I'm going to use my trusty um, blade. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a, a knife mark there. I'll now unscrew this. Take it off. And add another... A 
another three mil to it. So where I've got it there, there's three mil. Okay. Just gonna mark it with the knife. And then I'll run the knife down and make a cut. There we go. So now I'll go over to my um, my miter saw and I'll cut that off. Okay, I've trimmed it off. As you can see, let me just uh, bring you in a little bit closer here. As you can see, there is now a gap at the top here and that gap is just a hair under three mil doesn't matter it's fine so now that will be half of that is what I'm going to have either side of my pen tube so let me just put all this back together they can go in there Like so. Tighten my wing nut down. Okay, now the last thing I have to do is put a runner on it so that it runs in the, uh, the miter slot on my bandsaw. So I'm just going to go over and I'm going to mark the position of that, screw it down. And then I'll show you the final product. All right, here I've got um, just a seven mil fancy slimline tube. Seven mil, nothing to it, just a little tube. Here's my jig. All I'm going to do, slide the jig open, pop the tube in here and lock it in. Make sure it's sitting nice and flat. Lock it in, tighten down the nut. So there it is, that's in, that's now set. Set my uh, distance to cut. Pop it in the, uh, the miter slot. Now here I have a blank. Just a little piece of um, merbu, I think it was. Merbu, and I need to cut two of these to this size. Fem fancy slimline takes two. Now before, I used to put the, uh, the tube on here, mark it, then put the tube on and mark it again. Then I'd put a line in the middle, which I'm gonna do anyway, because it's good practice. But it used to take up a little bit of time, and if you got you know like uh, 10 or 12 pens you've got to do in, in one go that takes up time so all i've done is now is i've stuck my uh, tube into the uh the the jig i pop my um my blank in here like that turn on the uh the bandsaw there it is So I'll undo that now, and that now has cut that uh, blank to that uh, tube perfectly. It's giving me about a mil and a half on either side that I can barrel trim down to make sure it's nice and square, because if I haven't got this 100% square, then these aren't going to be square. But that doesn't matter, because once I glue the tube in, take it to the drill press and barrel trim it, it's going to be 100% perfect. Nice, quick and easy way to cut down to cut down my blanks from now. Should have done this uh, right off the bat. Uh, thanks to Keith Veronesi for coming up with the idea in the first place. Like I said, I, I borrowed his idea and made a few tweaks just to make it my own, and it works like a charm. So there you have it. My uh, pen blank cutting jig. Absolutely works like a charm. Took me about, uh, I don't know, about an hour, an hour and a half to put together. It's pretty easy. Um, and it's going to save me so much time, um, time and effort. It's it's a real, really a, a godsend. Love these jigs, love making jigs. And as you can see, there's my uh, pen blank and my tube, and it's perfect, perfect. And it doesn't matter how long the tube is, the jig sets automatically to the uh, the length. Doesn't matter how thick the tube is, because some of these tubes are a lot thicker. It all fits in here perfectly. Good to go. So once again. Thank you to Keith Veronesi for the idea. 
Um, like I said, I uh, put my own little sp uh, spin on it and it works like a charm. Okay. Once again, I'd like to uh, apologize to my subscribers for taking so long to put a video out. Um, these pens have really, really taken up a lot of my time. Um, not that that's a bad thing because they're selling like hotcakes. So like I said, I'm, um, I'm really mind blown as to how popular these pens are. Um, I'm going to try and put out videos uh, more regularly. Um, I might be doing another pen one. I've been saying this for about the last, I don't know, 15 years or so. I've still got my uh, sister's liquor cabinet to finish. Um, unfortunately, that's been put on the sidelines for the time being because of these pens. But I will get there and I will finish it. Now, if you liked the video that you just saw, if you liked the little jig that I just made, if you thought you, you can make a, a better one or uh, you got a better idea, please leave me a comment below. If you liked the, the, uh, the video, thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, thumbs down. All I ask is that you leave a comment as to why you left the thumbs down so I can make my videos better next time. Now, having said all that, thanks for watching and I'll catch you all on the next one. Bye for now.